Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to Be My Guest. Today we have back, we have William Butler back with us with the book that is really fantastic in the medical uh, situation that a lot of us are going through. Navigate the Medical Maze. Welcome back, Bill. Thanks. It's good. This is his third time with us. Thank you very he's much. An old, he's an old pro now. So this <laughs> book is Navigate the Medical Maze, Indispensable Resources, and a Roadmap to Explore the Critical Importance of Second Opinions from hospitals, surgeons, rehabilitation facilities, and caregivers. It includes the real stories from doctors, nurses, patients, and caregivers. Bill, you've been through it the ringer. It is a bestseller. Oh, yes. You've been through the ringer. You've been, what got you to write this book? I wrote the book because I didn't want people to make the same mistake I made and other people that I've, I've run into over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, we all want it to remain healthy. And we all want to make sure we get the right diagnosis, we get the right facilities, we get the right doctors, we don't get infections, mm -hmm. and we recover quick. And if people don't understand how to get through the medical maze or they want to learn more about it, mm -hmm. so as not to make the same mistakes of the people that are in the book, or myself, mm -hmm. then, then I'll be beneficial. I'll give you an example. In 2011, I was recommended to go to this one particular hospital for a spinal operation. Briefly, that led to three more operations, yep. near-death experience, and I lost my job because I never was the same, couldn't walk. I had to learn how to walk again. Then in 2015 and 2017, a friend of mine, because I wasn't going to go back to that hospital, mm -hmm. recommended me to South Shore Hospital, a South Shore Hospital. and. Those two operations led to infections. Yep. In which point called a double revision, which if you don't get rid of it, you pass away because of septus. Those experiences led to four different hospitals and five surgeons, two infectious disease doctors, and uh, 12 rehabs. 12 rehabs, guys. <laughs> 12 rehabs. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's a lot. So another reason I wrote the book, so people wouldn't make the same mistake I did, is they have choices. A lot of people do not know they have choices. And there's a number of people in the book that didn't take the choice, and things happen to them. And then there are success stories, but it's all real. If I were to have got a second opinion, I would have been off and running. But I had the ability to compare. Mm -hmm. And in doing my research, a number of people who actually go in and certify hospitals, mm -hmm. nursing homes, and rehabs to gauge them for the credibility, especially with Medicare, right. worked with me on the book. I can't mention their names because they, didn't, they don't want to be disclosed. <laughs> but uh, it's extremely important if you want to compare and find out what's the best hospital, what's the best surgeon, mm -hmm. what's the best rehab, and when the time comes, when is the best nursing home. Yeah. And I have some charts just to, to show you the comparison. Can you show us show us your first one that you showed us? Sure. This is amazing. What you created this yourself, right? Yeah. This That's is out of, all. Of this is is out of what the book can teach you how to do. Mm. So this is two nursing homes. Four stars, one star. Now, the one star has 16 uh, infractions, whereas the other one has nine. Those are citations, they're extremely important. They have to be done by the state and by the federal government. But if you look farther in, if you look at flu and pneumonia, mm -hmm. we have the four star exceeding extremely well, and the one star not doing so well. Mm. What it does tell you is how to get through comparing all these things. Mm -hmm. And it has a, this is just a sample of what they're looking for. They, they could gauge C. diff. Do you want to go to a hospital that 
provides a lot of C def? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> so that's just a sample of, of what we could do, and that's why I created this. Now remember the one star. Yeah. And remember the four star. Here we go. I love this one. I lived in this one yeah. for four months. Look at that breakfast, guys. The one star. <laughs> I lived in, I found this one. It was Care One in Millbury. I shouldn't mention that. Sure. But anyways, it's, uh, it, this is the four star. Now what, tell us what's in that. It's got the toast, a muffin. What's it, a piece of fruit? Piece of fruit. Looks like chocolate milk. And bacon. Bacon. And a banana. And upstairs, up there, all you get is like one muffin or something? You got a muffin, you had what, some type of mush. <laughs> uh, coffee, which I didn't drink, and orange juice, and that was it. And that was it. Till when? When do they feed you lunch? Uh, probably at 12 o'clock, approximately. But then when do you get breakfast? Seven or eight? Yeah. You've got to wake up for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. So you try to bring things in. Oh. But the point is, is this what you, you want this, or do you want this? No. So <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the book, you getting around the medical issues of comparison, it instructs you how to do it. It also mentions that it's important, if you have the time, mm -hmm. to interview more than one surgeon. The only reason I got through the double revision was I went out and finally compared three hospitals. Two of them bowed out because it was so difficult. Really? Another one didn't. I was given a team of two doctors. Yeah. The place was in Newton. And based on six more operations and a lot of rehabs, they get rid of the infection. That was because I compared. Mm. In which point, now you have the ability to go out and say, okay, I want to compare all these different types of facilities. Mm. If, you, if you need to and you have the time, it tells you how to do it. Now, when you're out there mm. and you're interviewing, because you're the interviewee, mm -hmm. right? You have an advocate who's right next to you. Right. The advocate is writing the notes. And when they're writing the notes, you're focused on the medical professional. That person takes them all those, three hospitals, let's say. Mm -hmm. You compare all the notes, and then you can make a decent decision. Yep. But what do you ask these people? What do you ask the surgeons? What do you ask the nursing homes? What do you ask, especially the rehabs? The book details in each one of those. Yeah. The best questions you can ask, plus others. Now, the book consisted of surgeons, uh, nurse, uh, nurses, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, and patients. And some of the patients made good decisions in which they got second opinions. Mm -hmm. Some of them ended up just like me. But they didn't know what questions to ask, so we, we show you what questions to ask. Did this come naturally to you when you were going through it? And you thought, Doug, I'm going to look into this and help other people? Yes. Yeah. I, I didn't. I wanted people to know what you went through. I, you know, I should have been in a wheelchair for the rest of my life or, or passed away. You got so fortunate. I did. Oh. It also t tells you how to avoid infections hmm. in the hospital. Which this doesn't. I don't have the hospital, but there's a number of infections that you can actually look at and go. You know, Newton Wellesley's pretty good. Yeah. But New England Baptist is better. Mm. And you, and then you can have the information that you need and to interview the doctors. The better you do that, you avoid the infection. I'll give you an example. According to the CDC and Joint Commission on Health. The number of people in the operating room, the higher percentage of an infection. That makes sense. Even with the masks on. People are moving around. Yep. Some of these hospitals are teaching hospitals. Yes, we have a wonderful one right up in Worcester. So what <laughs> we do. So what they do is they move around. Mm. It's interesting because it's a direct correlation. Now I ask you a question. When you go into a, a doctor, mm -hmm. or meet a medical professional, I'll say that way, and what do they normally ask you right off the bat? What brings you here today? And what your pain level is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, normally, that's what they say. 
people do not know how to really understand, in most cases, some people say a 10. Mm. If you were a 10, you wouldn't be sitting there. You wouldn't be sitting there. You'd be up the wall. Yeah. I hit nine levels. Yeah. Which was fine. Did they take you seriously? That's important. Once they knew that I knew, they took me very seriously. Right. They, so I teach people how to understand what to say when they go in for a pain level. And also, I created myself an incapability scale. Because one of the people in the book went into three doctors with, and she couldn't walk or anything, and she said, I have a pain level two. They did x-rays and MRIs, couldn't find anything. She was going to lose her teaching job. She went to one more. Yeah. He took all their reports. Yeah. He listened, and then he asked a question. Yeah. Did you do a CT scan? Yeah. And she said, no. And that fourth doctor is the one that helped her out. She had a spur on her spine. So looking at and asking about pain doesn't necessarily mean that that's the symptom. Oh, I found that so true. The symptom could be not being able to walk or whatever. The incapability scale helps you understand the people that don't have the pain. Mm. So I created that one. We're talking. William Butler, he has written the book, Navigate the Medical Maze. Bill, how can they get a hold of you or get your book? They can get the book on Amazon, and they can get hold of me with william-butler.com. This is fantastic. You have another book coming out, too. It's got maybe in the fall? It's going to be in the fall. And it's... It'll be my third book. And what was it going to be about? It's going to be how... Uh, helping people get out of homelessness and substance abuse. He has been through the ringer himself, and that's sometimes the best book that can be, when you've been there yourself. Because of the spinal operation that went wrong, yep. I couldn't get the jobs, I lost my house, yep. I was on the street, and I'm an educated person, so, but you never want to be on the street. No, and you really lived that. How long were you living that life? Mm, four years. It's it amazing. Snowstorms and so on. But I, I was walking along and I said, people have to know what this is like so they never want to enter into it. No. Bill, and it also know. helps them recover from that. Yeah. It, it details how to get out of that, and I've worked with experts on it that are also stated in the book. We, worked, we collaborated. Did you ever go down to... Uh, Veterans Inc. down in Grove Street in uh, Worcester. Green Street. Grove Street. Grove Street in Worcester. Veterans Inc. Very, very well known in this area. And I'll bet you there are a few people in there who help you too. Would love to talk with you. See, uh, that's what I do. He knows me. I thought I always get people out there. The key, the key is yeah. to do what, exactly what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Is explain what the book and the advantage of the book yeah. to the readers. Not only the readers. They can be disciples. They can be apostles for the content of the book, at which point they can tell a loved one or a friend, look it, here's the book. Mm -hmm. It tells you how to compare hospitals. It tells you how to compare this. I've done it with two cancer patients since the book was published. And one listened to me and the other didn't listen to the, well, not to me, but to the comparisons. Yeah. One who didn't, had a North Shore hospital and had complications. The other one went okay. You know what? who endorsed the book was Joyce Cole Haywood. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I do remember her from way back. She's an Emmy uh, Award winner, uh, correspondent, mm -hmm. and she had three bouts with cancer. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard her in a, uh, a seminar that she gave for women. Mm -hmm. I have overheard it. So I contacted her, I sent the manuscript. We both agree that people, and that's what she said to these ladies, mm -hmm. ladies, you need a second or third opinion. Right. Now, one of the reasons she did that, and we didn't discuss it, but she thought the book was great, so she endorsed it. But something happened with her mm. in three different bouts with cancer. And maybe she was one was she didn't search 
a little bit harder, but she lucked out and she got the right person like me. Mm -hmm. Thus, she learned uh, how to beat the cancer. Right. I think a lot of the thing that when a person gets into a certain hospital or is choosing one that, like you say, look into it, you know, is to find out if they have a patient rep advocate department because yes. I think it's fantastic. Do not be afraid. That's why they're there. Even if you're having an awful time getting through for an appointment, it's no big deal. Just dial up for the patient rep or advocates department and they'll actually go down there, solve it, and get back to you. And they're great social workers too. Very good. Now the other thing is get a friend or get a church member, I don't care who it is, and have them stick with you. Yes, notes. Notes <laughs> and reports. Oh yeah. It makes the decisions better. Yep. And you're not just believing, as I did, one diagnosis, two diagnoses, yep. three infections, and the pain was incredible. Did you go through radiation, Bill? No, they put me on an opiates. Oh, oh, oh. Did you have a problem with the opiates? No. Nope, no. You you got through that. Yeah. Oh. In Thank fact, God. I got off them in about five five weeks. That is great. Yeah. But it, it, the pain was at a level six, seven, and eight. Oh, yeah. The, the, that's the only thing they could do. They give you that little squirt thing, right? That if you're feeling it at a certain, <laughs> yeah, I'd be afraid of that. <laughs> that's a little bit stronger. <laughs> not that I, I'm not afraid of getting uh, addicted to it. What I don't like is even if they give you a Percocet after surgery, I like try to cut it in half. I don't like the feeling. Yeah. Uh, Stomach-wise? My, my, my partner, Ooh. Carol, and, and I, were, we couldn't take Percocet. Yeah, it, it doesn't agree with me. I don't like the feeling. Again, going back to the book, mm. doctors are in it, the top doctors. Nurses. Top nurses. Patients. And top patients. patients. Yep. The real patients yep. that just open their hearts. And they, they became public. I changed their names, of course. Mm. But they became public because they want the readers to be able to make the good decision, or not the same decision that they made. How did you find, it's I can understand, real. finding the doctors and nurses, how did you go about finding patients who, who would come to you and talk to you? Uh, people saw me with crutches, <laughs> people saw me in pain. Okay. Uh, I would go to associations and they got to know, uh, some of the nurses got to know me. So by word of mouth, um, I was able to do that. Like some connecting referrals, that's awesome. Hey, hey. Quick story, I was down at a party in, uh, I came up Canton, and the individual said, why are you walking like that? I was walking like a geisha girl. Yeah. I was walking <laughs> it. And I said, because of this, this, and this, and yeah. he said, I made the same mistake. My sister went up to a hospital on the North Shore, caught an infection when we passed, she, after that she died. It's a sad story, but it's a real story. And, but there's great stories in there too. Yes, the doctors, now where were the, how did you find them? Did you just, ones that you'd seen? Or were you gutsy enough to get out there and say, will you help me with my book? <laughs> you, he, is, you see, he is the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> You're like my father. He just reminds me so much of dad. It was my partner Carol because she yeah. knew the doctor because of incidents in her family. Yeah. And Dr. Edward Hoffer, he was one of the top cardiologists in the world. He was in the heart study. What hospital was that? Doing it in Framingham. Yep. Well, I was getting. He, he was getting mostly on retired, so he was farming out to Leahy and, and uh, one other hospital. Yeah. But I told him what it was about and I was introduced because of my friend. And he said, I'll do it. That's the way. Most of them won't because right. there's a, it's a closed knit. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to go in and open up that communication. But Dr. Hoffer and a couple of other, other doctors volunteered. We're talking with Bill Butler, William Butler. He wrote, Navigate the Medical Maze. Ain't that the truth? Bill, how can they get a hold of you in your book? Again, it's william-butler.com, or you can uh, look me up on the web, I'm on LinkedIn on, and, and Facebook, but on, it's under Bill Butler. A lot of patients, like my mother was And one, Amazon. And Amazon. A lot of patients, my mother was one of them. She was temporarily in a rehab facility, and she was elderly, 
And she would. Compl she told me, you know, at night. I mean, if I have to go to the bathroom, it, I, I'll ring and no one comes. Mm -hmm. He said, "Let me talk to them." No, no, don't do that. She was afraid of repercussions. It's in the book. Yeah. Part of the book, real quick, is just telling the reader who, what the responsibilities of a nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. the surgeon, a CNA. Because when you go in there, you think the CNA is your slave. Well, I'm sorry, that's no. not the case. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm trained a little bit yeah. being a CNA. Yeah. And the nurse practitioners are, are uh, it, they're probably as close to a doctor as you can get. I made that mistake. Yeah. So I describe each type, the good points and the bad points. I've had real bad nurses that wouldn't give me any pain medicine. And then hours later, they had a shift change. Yeah. <laughs> an, an older lady nurse yeah. came in, yeah. and she was holding a cup. And in the cup was codeine <laughs> to get me through because they hadn't sent the script oh. from the hospital to the rehab. So it was 18 hours with an, an open spot. But there was that one nurse who said, some of them just don't know what to do. I've been around for a while. They have a box on every floor in a hospital and a rehab that all they have to do is call the doctor or make their own decisions, mm -hmm. the head nurse. They can open up that box and they can relieve your pain. You must have been one hell of a patient. <laughs> you are good because, just like my father, he had to, my mother was very sick and needed to have an operation and he wanted her to go to the uh, Baptist Hospital, this, oh, she fractured her pelvis. She sneezed. Oh, yeah. So he got on the phone with the insurance company. He didn't mess with my father. They kept saying, "Oh, oh no, we can't do that. We can't do that." He said, "Yes, you can," and he made it happen. She ended up at doing the Baptist. I, I touch on insurance in there, but it is one of the things when you the, you do compare. Uh, you also have to check with your insurance to make sure oh. that that rehab, uh, that nursing home is covered. There is that loop. It also The book also tells you how to get around that. Mm -hmm. And also about the codes that they use to tell the insurance company this is the severity of your problem. Because if it's, that, if it's this code, yeah. you're expected to only be this far, there, there for X period of time. And if you walk 100 yards, you're out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Then the tire code is acute, chronic, and they'll give you whatever you need. Yeah. That cold co uh, code is the DRG code. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hoffer and I talk about it. You have the right under HIPAA to ask any question you want. Mm -hmm. So you ask what the code level is. It's explained in the book, yeah. and then you can go through the web and you can learn more. Bill, where have you been appearing since I haven't seen you? Where have you been? <laughs> I've, been writing, yeah, I've been writing the other book. Yeah. And uh, moving down to Virginia. You're moving to Virginia? Yeah. Yeah. When? Uh, we haven't found the place for us yet. But the reason we're going to Virginia is because we're over 55, and um, it might, the house is just too big for us. Well, yeah, you could get a great price sell your house right now. And it's my husband and I say, where the heck are you going to go? I mean, you, yeah, you could sell it for a great price, but are you going to be able to afford to get to the next step? And the other things I did was uh, work for St. Vincent Paul out of Marlboro, help start that up. There's a St. Vincent in Marlboro? You talk, the hospital's in Worcester. St. Vincent uh, uh, de Paul. Okay, got it. All right. Said yeah. that wrong. And then also I helped out at a rehabilitation place in Marlboro. And so between that, I had a lot of time. Bill, what would you suggest to paid people? I read this a lot. They are afraid that they will hurt the doctor's feelings if they go get another opinion. I mean, you don't have to tell that doctor that. It's perfectly free. It's your life. Dr. Hoffer, again, was one of the top cardiac uh, surgeons in, in Massachusetts, but definitely around the world. Mm. And part of what he, in his book, I read it and I asked him if I could use it. You're not there to please the doctor. Yeah, I know. 
You're not there to please the head director of a rehab. Exactly. You're there to ask the right questions and get the right answers. Yeah. You look at their demeanor, and if their demeanor is one I've, I don't care, just yeah. sort of, then you've got a problem, and your advocate helps you exactly. see that. Your advocate, your patient, also in nursing homes. It's not home, there. Forget their ego. At, um, in nursing homes, we have a friend that was, was a nightmare for two years, too young for this. He was sitting in a nursing home with no one helping him. The man needed an MRI. He couldn't walk. Finally, we all got him together to move to a different one. Finally, after about two and a half years, he got an MRI. He's had two neck surgeries. And um, there's what's called an ombudsman. You know about that in these places. And I found out who the new ombudsman was. And I just harped into him. Look, then he's not asking for a pot of gold. He just needs an MRI. They got him one. Ombudsman. You got a relative in a nursing home. You know that type of thing. They're the ones who are the go-between. They know how to be the diplomat and go between you and what's going on with the other end. Worked. I've seen it. I've seen most You'd everything. You excellent ombudsman. The nursing homes, as I, normally on the third floor, I've made friends. I played bingo. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to do, right? Recreation departments are very important what you look for, too. Definitely. It's mental attitude. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep busy and not get depressed and think about you and your pain. Don't right. just sit in your bed and say, Oh, well, I, I, there's nothing I can do. This is what they're telling me. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> well, when you're in a nursing home, you're in a rehabilitation facility. Mm -hmm. There's one doctor on the floor, and that's, yep. they'll see it the first time you're there and the last time you're there. Exactly what happened to him. It's Hardly the, ever. It's the nurses that, I, I use a term, mm -hmm. and the nurses love it because I get a lot of feedback from it. It's not the nurses that save people's lives. Or the doctors. It's the nurses. Mm. The doctors don't mind it. One thing that uh, before we close it, uh, we were just talking about is having someone with you. When my husband had cancer a couple years ago, I had a whole notebook, and I was t as he was talking with the doctor, I was taking down all kinds of things. And before we went, I'd have questions. We still have that, yep. but it's fantastic. Yep. Someone, so that the patient doesn't have to worry about this. They got enough on their mind. Where is the schedule? And that has the questions and all of that material. Yeah. Bill, are we ever going to see you again if you're if you're going to Virginia? Uh, yeah, yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm leaving the area. But well, for yeah. good. Okay. How many how long the hours is it down there from here? It's only about four hours. Only? Oh my god. I have to bring a sleeping bag if I get past an hour. Maybe and I half. shouldn't have told you that. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to get it back. He's got this next book coming up. And I'll come I'll, back if you know. Oh, yeah. We can come back. We'll put you up, give you a sleepy bag. I'm looking for speaking engagements. Yep. I know Massachusetts extremely well. I'm hoping to. Yeah, branch out all over New England. Right. We'll get him back. Bill, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Look out for his next book. Go downstairs at the Upton Library. Check out Navigate the Medical Maze. It's out in the dedicated local authors section of our library. I think you're going to be amazed. Thanks, Bill. You're very welcome. See you next time. Riding on a shooting star Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer than it seems 